Hi there. Today we'll look at autoregressive diffusion models by Emil Hogeboom and others of Google Research. This paper on a high level proposes a new type of autoregressive model, specifically one where variables can be decoded in arbitrary orders. Uh, this is akin to the new types of diffusion models that have been used for generative models. And it essentially amounts to something like BERT in sequence. Uh, the training objective is made such that we can decode variables as we like. And I can show you the results. The results are going to be that we can, for example, sample pictures pixel by pixel uh, in order to make a generative model. So rather than uh, GANs, which produce pictures all at once, or what we had so far, autoregressive models, but with a fixed order, from, for example, from left to right, uh, now we can do it in any order. In addition to this, they introduce techniques where you don't have to go pixel by pixel, but you can do multiple pixels at the same time and uh, speed up by a lot. So this is a paper which is also community informed. So this is a community informed paper review, which means that in uh, on our Discord server, we have regular paper discussions. This was one of them. I tried to pay attention. I, I don't I can't say yet whether that has worked. But um, I'm trying to try to recount here a little bit also. So my opinions are influenced uh, a lot by what was said at the paper discussion. If you want to influence my opinion, uh, feel free to join our paper discussions. Okay, so there we go. They say they introduce these autoregressive diffusion models, which is a model class encompassing and generalizing order agnostic autoregressive models, um, and absorbing discrete diffusion models which they show are special cases, yada, yada, yada. They say they're simple to implement and easy to train, unlike standard autoregressive models, which you might know as um, LSTMs or standard autoregressive models or GPT type transformers. These are all autoregressive models. They do not require causal masking of model representations and can be trained using an effective objective similar to modern probabilistic diffusion models that scales favorably to high dimensional data. At test time, the ARDMs support parallel generation, which can be adapted to fit any given generation budget. So you can trade off uh, how long you need to produce a given sample with how with the quality. Uh, so you can say I want it faster, and you'll still get a sample, you'll just get a like a lower quality sample. We find that they require significantly fewer steps than discrete diffusion models to attain the same performance, yada, yada, yada. They also do lossless compression with it. Okay, so what's the deal with autoregressive models, right? If I want to, if I have a bunch of variables, let's say I have a piece of text or something like this, uh, what I'd have to do is I'd, you know, what you'd usually do in GPT, you give a prefix, and then you decode a token by token from left to right, right? a cat, and then the model has to predict sat on the and so on. So you predict from left to right, one by one, that's also how you train, right, you train from left to right, you predict from left to right. And with text, that makes kind of sense, because we also read from left to right, right. However, it would also make sense to do this in a different order. So if you have a cat, um, and you first decode, let's say, Matt right here, then if you first do that, then it becomes pretty clear what's in here. So in order to give the model sort of the, the, the biggest freedom, you could let it decode in other places first, and then it could decode the Matt here first, which would sort of determine the rest of the sentence, whereas on the top, uh, the model already sort of has to have in mind what it wants to say later, like the fact that, that there's math here, uh, in order to produce all of these things here. Uh, but in, in this way, uh, the model could predict that first, and then the rest is sort of determined, so it could impute that a little bit. And this all of this 
is just to show you that it's not the only way to decode left to right and even more so in something like image GPT. So you have an image and in a GAN I produce the whole picture as one, at once but in something like image GTP uh, what I do is I start at the top left and I simply start producing the pixels left to right top to bottom right that's it and there is not really a reason why this is the best order to produce things at. It's simply that we train in this way and that means we have to predict in this way. What the autoregressive diffusion models do is they say we're going to train a model that can produce a sample in any order. It doesn't matter which one. So we could start off with like this pixel, then go to this, then ask for this, then ask for this. We can even ask the model something like, which one do you feel best about? Like, which one are you most sure about? And the model can tell us. And then that's the one that we could, we could decode further. We can also tell the model to decode like three pixels at a time, and then these three pixels and so on. So that's the trade off I mentioned. So this is how it looks in practice. What you're going to have is you're going to have a um, a neural. So here, the vector is your sample, right? And usually you would decode top to bottom. That's sort of the analogous to left to right. That's what you usually would do. However, in this model, you can see first it's empty. So nothing is decoded yet. You have your neural network, you have your predictor, let's say, that predicts a distribution. So for every single item in the sample, it predicts um, a distribution. So these here are categorical variables. Uh, so it's going to be predicting a distribution. And so all of these, for example, if the ears are pixels, all of them predict a color. So prediction is made for the whole image and not just for the thing you want to decode. And after that, you decide on one of them that you actually want to decode, you sample that or you take the, the maximum class or whatever. And then you continue, right, then the next step. So in the next step, you have the same sample. Um, except that one of the values is now already decoded, the other ones are still empty. Again, you use a neural network to predict a distribution for the entire image, you'll see that, you know, for technical reasons, even this here, is actually predicted, it doesn't need to be. But um, the important part is that you're going to predict the entire image at once. Um, and then you decide to again, decode one of them, that's your choosing. So this one, and you can see that you know, this how this goes on. Specifically, which ones you dec decode is given by a by this thing right here, this sigma is a variable that stands for a given permutation. So what you would do is if before, before you sample, you can select a permutation, you can say here is the, the order in which I want to decode, and then you decode according to that. But it, it, in my mind, it doesn't matter even if you decide on the fly. So you can decide on the fly, you know, here's, here's my desired order, I want to decode in that way. Now, if this is, seems familiar to you, if you have seen a model something like this already before, then if you're thinking of BERT, you would be sort of correct. So even the paper says that this is kind of like you take the BERT model, and you just kind of stack it, um, or you just repeat it. Notice the this here, these are always the same neural network. So the same neural network will predict every single step right here. Um, that's why it's an autoregressive model, right? Because you input the output into the same neural network again. So what do you do in BERT? You have a bunch, you have a sentence, right? A cat sat on, if you do masked language modeling, you put that through the neural network, right? That's BERT. And out comes one sort of output per token. Okay. Now, what you do when you train BERT, you mask some of the tokens, right, for example, this one and this one. And then BERT predicts these, BERT predicts these at once, this one and this one. And what you want to do 
sorry, BERT predicts these tokens at once. And that's a categorical distribution. That's a classification into your vocabulary, right? Which word was masked right here? So what BERT needs to do is BERT needs to infer from the words that exist uh, what other words could be here. Notice one interesting property about BERT. The question is, of course, you know, why do we even have to do this in a particular order? Can't we just, if we are already predicting all pixels at once, right? The network already for each pixel that's not yet there predicts a categorical distribution. Why can't we just sample that, right? And the answer is because these things are not independent. So if I, um, if I simply, if I have a bunch of variables right here, let me use this one. If every single one of these nodes gives me a distribution, or let's say just the ones that are not, just the ones that are not filled out yet, right? Here I have two pixels or two elements that are not filled yet. Now I'm going to take my input vector and I'm going to use that to predict for every of one of these two pixels, what's the distribution of values that could be there, right? So the distribution of values could be, well, the first, uh, number one is really popular, two not so much, number three a little bit. And here it could be, let's say, number one also popular, number two a little bit, number three not that much, right? Now, if, if those two are independent, then we could totally uh, fill these in at the same time, but they might not be, right? Pixels typically aren't independent if they're in the same image. For example, right, if the entire if the pixel here is blue, that makes it makes it's not independent of the fact of whether the pixel, you know, right next to it is blue. And that doesn't only count for pixels next to one another, uh, that counts for pixels farther away. Of course, the further they are, the less dependent they probably are. But still, I can't just sample both independently, I need to, in order to sample one, I need to know what the other is. So I need to sample this one first and not just have the distribution, I need to commit to one of the uh, outcomes before I even try to sample the other one. And by committing to one, that will actually change the distribution of the other one because this here assumes that the other pixel will be according to this distribution. However, once it's sampled, it's no longer this distribution, it's actually one of these things for sure, like it's maybe this one for sure, if that has been sampled. And that will change in turn, the distribution. So what I want to do is I want to put the whole thing through the neural network again, in order to really get the true distribution of this node right here. So maybe it's maybe it was really likely that number class number one was hit, but now that it sees well, this other node really has chosen number one. So I'm probably not number one. So I am class number two, maybe. I hope this is, re this is a bit clear, that even though we can train in BERT style, so we can predict all the things that are missing at once, what we cannot do is we cannot decode um, all the things at once, because what some of the elements or all of the elements are dependent uh, on all of the other elements. And being dependent means that we they need to know what the other elements are before they themselves uh, commit to one of the classes of their distribution. And that's the whole, the whole point of it. The point is, these models, they train like BERT, uh, but they decode like, uh, like autoregressive models, except that the order isn't fixed, the order can be any order you want. And they do actually apply this to text. So just so you can see that uh, this, how this looks. So the, here's how it looks. This is a character level language model, right? So the uh, it starts off with a relatively empty, uh, empty sentence, let's say, so the underscores are just empty. These are variables that are not chosen yet. 
and then it's going to fill in a bunch uh, at the beginning. <laughs> you can see that right here. And it's going to fill in some more, right? So here it's going to fill in some more. You'll notice that all of the ones that existed, they should still exist, do they? Do they? I'm not even sure. Like here the X still exists, the I still exists this eye still exists yeah okay so all of the ones that were there they are still there but there are just more now and then more are imputed more are imputed uh, until you finally come to the fully imputed sentence and um you can see that these are actual samples from their model so on text on character level text it's not yet like super good um the sentence doesn't really make sense. Uh, I don't think that's actually an English word. It sounds English, but it may not exactly be an English word. A potentially unsucked proof or inject operational <laughs> weapons in the game car us individual model. <laughs> so yeah, this is it's unclear because these are the sort of the beginnings of these types of models of whether that's the case or whether it's just much 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 more um a much better objective to just train other aggressive from left to right uh because there's also trade-offs right if you predict every single thing at once in your loss function has to split between all the things that there are to predict however if you just train left to right then your loss function can focus fully on what the next token is right in the given order so you gain the ability to decode in any order you want, uh, but that has a trade-off, namely a performance trade-off, uh, because the model that specializes in one particular, um, in one particular order will always beat you. So let's go back. And I think that's, you know, that's the, the, the entire point. I've, I've sort of found you can simplify this relatively much by essentially saying, you know, this is BERT training uh, but you decode one after another. And you can, I'm pretty sure the way this, this is, you can, you could take, you could take the pre-trained BERT checkpoints and sort of decode like this. However, the problem is, of course, these BERT checkpoints, they have been trained with like a fixed percentage of um, tokens masked out. So they usually say it's like 10 to 20% of tokens masked out. However, in order to really get these models to uh, produce samples, they also had had to have seen cases where, well, like this case where zero percent, sorry, not zero, 100% of the tokens are masked, right? So the way you train this is you mask tokens like BERT and then you predict all of them at once. Um, so the model would have to have seen every single proportion of masked tokens. So that's not what exactly what, um, what BERT is trained for, but in essence, you could do it. So what's the background? The background is essentially that uh, these models, what they usually do is they say, look, uh, the whole sample has a given probability, I can decompose that probability due to the multiplicative rule into products or in the log space sums of probabilities. Um, and this here, this part here is what the order regressive models take. Uh, they say, look, if I have a bunch of nodes, then the probability of, for example, this node is um, conditioned on everything that's before. So I can factorize this into products where every probability is conditioned on the ones before. And these models, they essentially go and they say, well, there is no reason, no particular reason why you have to factorize in this way, you can in fact factorize in any order that you want. And um, if you do that, if you recognize that you can factorize in any order you want, you can also say that um, you can also say that the you can essentially not only train in the order that you decode in, you can already train for all the orders at once, right? So if, if my chosen order is I go from here to here to here to here, right? Once I'm at the purple node, right? 
in this particular order, I would go here next. Right? But in many other orders, right, where I came from, from here, in a other order, I would go here next. And in yet another order I could choose, I would go here next. And these orders I sample uniformly. Okay, so I can reasonably assume that the next time I see the sample, I'm in one of those other orderings. Right? And therefore, the expectation of my loss function is just the average if I were to predict this one, or this one, or this one at this time. And therefore, if why do I have to wait for the next samples, uh, I can simply say right now, well, I'm simply going to predict all of them at the same time and then take the mean as my loss function. So the mean classification error as my loss function, rather than just predict the one in the order where I happen to be. Left to right models don't need to do that, because they are always left to right. So the next time they see the sample, uh, they will have to only decode the exact same next variable. However, these models, we train them to work in arbitrary orders. And therefore, we might as well predict all of the orders at once, and take the mean of the loss function as the loss function. And there again, you see the trade off. Um, this allows us then to decode in any order we want. However, also, there's a trade off. Now only one over the number of, of remaining nodes uh, is the portion of the loss function that is really trained on the order that we're eventually going to have. And all the others are essentially superfluous. Well, they might help for generalization a bit. But you know, the, the you, you significantly reduce loss mass on the order that you actually then care about at the end when you sample. So here is how you sample, it's pretty simple. It's what I said. So you initialize x empty, you sample one order, as I said, you don't have to commit to one at the beginning, but that's how you specified you sample an order uniformly. Um, then you go through the through the ordering through the permutation here, sigma is the, the permutation of the nodes to decode. Uh, this is, is very complicated written. So the, they build these masks right here, you can see they built these masks. And essentially, m is just whatever has been decoded so far n is whatever is whatever one node is to pre be predicted right now. Uh, so what you do is you build a categorical distribution. Um, you put the masked x into your neural network, build a categorical distribution. So this here means you predict all of the nodes at once given what you've predicted so far. So m times x is what you've predicted so far, that goes into a neural network, that's essentially the learned part of this. And the neural network will output a distribution, a categorical distribution for every single other node there is. And what you do then is you choose the one the n, you know, that's the entry in the um, ordering that you chose, you choose the one that you want to decode, and you simply augment, amend the sample that uh, you have by the one you want to decode. This is, is written very complicated in a very complicated way. So optimizing training these models isn't too hard either. What you're going to do is you have a data point that I guess you sample from the data set. You're going to sample one particular time step. So notice here, we go over all the time steps, because we actually want to get a sample. When we train, that's much like uh, transformer auto regressive models, actually, there we can train all the time steps at once. But the individual training sample is just we select one particular time step in one particular ordering, right? So we select an ordering and in that ordering, we select the time step. Um, and Typically, what you do is so you have a picture, you have pixels, what this amounts to is we say, okay, we're just gonna mask a bunch of these pixels right here, we're just gonna black them out, right, that will correspond to some time step in some ordering. So we're just gonna assume we have predicted all of the ones that we haven't masked. And now we're trying to predict all of the ones that we did mask, right, 
all of these ones we're going to predict at once. And um, yeah, that will... So you notice that there is no N right here. The N specifies the one pixel you want to predict next. But during training, we simply mask out a bunch of pixels and then we predict all at once. So again, we have the M, which is what we've predicted so far. We input M times X into the neural network. So the neural network will predict the distribution of every single thing that we haven't predicted so far. And rather than selecting N from it, we now select one minus M. So everything that hasn't been predicted so far. And then we average that and that will become our loss function. Okay. Now, given that we know what the pixels are that we've masked during training, uh, we can actually compute this loss function. And, you know, that's, that's it. That's how you train. Uh, pretty simple. As I said, this should remind you of BERT. And yeah, so they have several extensions to this, which I just briefly want to touch. So they now they say, well, if we if we sort of allow a bunch of times these dependence independency mistakes, so you know, given that we have like, I don't know, a million pixels in an image, right? Can't we just sort of assume that you know, the pixel up here, and maybe the pixel here, they're kind of independent from each other. So couldn't we just sort of sample, um, sample them at once, so we can sample multiple pixels at once uh, if they're kind of far away from each other we, we're just kind of fine with that um, and uh, yeah so we trade off speed uh, predicting multiple pixels at a time uh, by we trade off speed and accuracy essentially because now the pixels that we predict at the same time they have no knowledge of the other pixels in the same time step uh, that's the problem we've talked about before. And then they go a step further and they say, well, rather than deciding, you know, we want to decode five pixels at a time instead of just one, what we're going to do is we're going to give the algorithm a budget. And they say, look, you have an entire image, we have 20 steps. So you need to decide. This is the visualization right here. You have 20 steps, you need to decide, do I want to go like, um, do I want to go so here is like one pixel, then two pixels, then three pixels, then five pixels, then the rest of the pixels, right? These are five time steps. That's your budget, you decide. So they use a dynamic programming algorithm. Essentially, they build up, they go through their, as far as I understand it, they go through their training data set. And um, they compute what they call loss components. So here is your, your budget. And here is the number of nodes in the uh, in the here is the number of nodes in your data points. And so you can say, okay, for step number three, if I were to decode five uh, steps in step number three, right, how much would that cost? And then you can f try to find in classic dynamic programming fashion, a path through this uh, matrix. And, you know, at the end, this path is going to give you what how many pixels you should decode at what step. So for example, here in step one, we decode two, then we decode one. Uh, I don't know what this actually means. One, no, zero. <laughs> that makes no sense. And then we decode uh, the rest. But you know how dynamic programming works. And this isn't this is from a different paper, actually. But they just say, you know, we can use this given that we train for any order at all, and predict all at the same time, this is an option. So you can technically trade this off. What they also do is this depth upscaling. And what they do in the depth upscaling is they say, well, you know, if we're trying to predict a pixel value for a pixel, right, the pixel value is like 256 classes, yeah, it's, it's a big thing, right? Let's not have the model. <clears throat> so the model needs to sort of commit to one of them, you know, in immediately, like, that's my pixel value. What if what if we could do the following? 
what if we could have the model just predict which half of the pixel values it's in, right? Are you bright in the blue channel or are you not bright? Are you dark? Okay. And then we do this for all the pixels. So all the pixels in the image, they simply first in the first iteration decide, am I light or am I dark, right? Am I light? Am I dark? Am I light? Am I dark? And so on. And then once everyone has decided on that, we go over the image again. And we say, well, okay, now, okay, I should have filled all of them. Just imagine all of them filled in. Now they say, okay, now you pixel who previously decided you were light. Now that you see all the other pixel and their crude decision, you know, what sub part of the light do you fall in? Are you very light or are you just a bit light? And then so we go through the image multiple times, right? It can even be in different orders. And the advantage here is that you first let the other parts make crude decisions, and then you don't have to decide out of the blue, right? So you, you know, sort of approximately what all the others are before you refine, and then you refine, 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 until you get to uh, the final choice. So this is I think this is a neat idea. Uh, they specify exactly, you know, how to do this. However, I can't help noticing that, as you can see the ordering here, by which you decode, so you first predict the, the crude part, then the not so crude part, then the not so not so crude part, and finally, you predict the, the full part. I can't help but notice that this is again, a fixed order autoregressive model, right? <laughs> this is, this is again, like this is exactly what they're trying to run away from. Uh, so they they just introduce it again, uh, in a sub part of their model, which I find to be funny, right. And on the on the other hand, this this only works really. Uh, this is my other problem with this, this only works if this isn't really a categorical variable, right pixel value, pixel value is a continuous variable, you can be anywhere, we just discretize it, right. And that's why this works the, you know, decide on your crude, and then go go um, more less and less crude, go more and more detailed. If you have something like a, a true classification, right? Um, let's say into tokens of a vocabulary like A, B, C, D, E, it, it makes no sense to ask the model, well, in which half of the alphabet are you? The model can't do a crude decision, it already needs to know to answer this question for you. So unless you have a way to really split the vocabulary in meaningful fashion, it this doesn't make sense. This is really, this is really a, a workaround around the artifact that they need categorical variables for their model. And therefore, they discretize the, the, um, the brightness here of the pixels. And you know, that that's a result of that. So in any case, I don't want to dive too much into the results, you've already seen them, they do don't do large scale. Um, as far as I can tell, they do C for 10 generation, they also do lossless compression. What they can do is with their model, they have a pretty good handle at the trade off. So this gives you the app. So the, the user of the model, a good way of trading off uh, performance for speed. And you can do this on the fly, right, you can do, you can say, I want less performance, I want more performance, I have less of a budget to infer the sample or more. And you can change from from time to time. And yeah, these these models, as I said, they're young, therefore, they have a way to go. Uh, we've put so much work into GANs and whatnot, and, and autoregressive text models, that the fail like, the fact that these here are not state of the art yet, they might, it might just be an artifact of that, or they might just suck who knows. All right, thank you so much for listening. As I said, join our discord to get uh, in on the paper discussions. They're usually very, very entertaining. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.